and today's focus is labor dystocia and operative vaginal delivery. I can guarantee that everyone is going to um, get a question on this during your either your ABOG exam or your um, uh, ABOG exam. This is something that's fairly um, important. Okay. So at that point, that's how I presented the baby to you. So the first thing you should do is wrap the baby in a blue towel, call for extra help, which you did, which was perfect. Um, and then you're going to need to rotate the baby from side to side to reduce the arms. And then exactly, you want to make sure that the baby's going to be prone, okay, because you don't want to have head entrapment. So that's the, that's the one thing I was trying to get you to say. So the big thing is you're worried about head entrapment. So um, the thing with head entrapment is having the head flex is going to help and also having some really long scissors in the room, some long mayo, so you can do Jerusalem's incisions if you have an entrapped head. And the incisions are just like the Mercedes-Benz sign, if you've seen those. So um, 2, 10, and 6 is where you make your incision if you have an entrapped head. The other thing you could do if the head's entrapped is you basically turn the baby all the way around so it's supine and uh, flip the baby up and over the maternal abdomen. So if you can imagine a, a rag doll and you're holding the legs and arms and you can't and you're pushing you know down um, and you can't get the mom to deliver the head and you've tried the incisions and those don't work, what you can do is you can rotate the baby so it's supine, flip the baby onto the maternal abdomen and then try and deliver, you know, push down on the cervix and try to deliver the head that way. Okay, so those are those are the concerns: is head entrapment, and that's why a lot of a lot of big move was to do um, primary cesareans for breaches. Okay, but other than that, I think you answered perfectly. I know you kind of felt a little bit awkward, but um, definitely having the the steps for a breach delivery memorized is going to really help. Okay. okay. All right. Well, you did a great job. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, that was okay with the mentum anterior response. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. That that was that was perfect. Obviously, uh, what presentation type would you deliver? Obviously, if you had a breach, um, you know, an active labor at seven centimeters, you'd probably do a C-section on her. If you had a transverse position, um, you know, obviously, you know, prolapsed arm. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you had a malpositioned twins, uh, you would you wouldn't want to. Um, deliver them either, and, um, you know, a brow presentation, if she was further along, might be a contraindication. Some people um, uh, also, um, um, some people um, also, uh, you know, would ask, how would you deliver a brow presentation? And the thing is, is, um, you know, a brow presentation, you, you definitely don't want to have a brow presentation at 10 centimeters because you're going to have the largest diameter of a baby coming through. So that baby's actually not going to be able to vaginally deliver. But at 7 centimeters, the baby could easily restitute. So that's what I would say. At 7 centimeters in brow presentation, you know, there's a, there's a possibility of converting to face presentation. Um, the only problem with a face presentation is once the baby's eyes start coming down through the cervix, <laughs> sometimes you could have bradycardia and that baby will have fetal intolerance of labor. Um, but, you know, for a mentum anterior, that would be someone that would be fine to deliver. A mentum posterior, um, you know, would be uh, definitely a contraindication. So I think that, I think you did fine with saying what you did. And, it, you know, exactly, it, it, this is a trick question. At seven centimeters, how can you really tell it's brow? 